Spent too much time in California. Now I got that Rona. Gotta be a loner. Staring at my phone. Gotta be a loner. Gotta be a loner. What can I say? We're back. The Alona Virus Podcast. Good to be back. Lots happened, right? Uh, I'm back for no particular reason other than I feel like there's a lot more that we're going to talk about. Or there's a lot more that could, there's a lot more to talk about. And I also have some other stuff going on that just kind of makes sense for uh, me to start doing this again. Uh, maybe not every week, but sometimes it's going to be out there. Um... I don't even know how to catch up. Last time, the last episode I did was with my friend Ryan, who uh, was a reporter for the Wall Street Journal. Still is. <laughs> I use the past tense, but uh, present tense applies. And um, I also just got a job, speaking of working, as a remote contact tracer. So that's very relevant to this podcast. It's one of the reasons I'm bringing it back. One of a few. Uh, Contact tracer through Rutgers University in New Jersey. So I'm going to be doing that remotely and part-time. Uh, haven't started yet. They seem to be pretty backed up. They keep saying uh, they hired me and then they're they're just kind of like, we'll give you a start date at some point. Hopefully that's in the next couple of weeks. Hopefully going to have some interesting uh, insight into what's actually happening. And that'll be in New Jersey. And contact tracing is one of those things where... Um, it only works if the the uh, extent of the outbreaks are, are kind of small. If it's just like overblown, then contact tracing doesn't really do anything. But it, it, New Jersey is a, has been in a good place for a few months. So I think contact tracing will be effective. Hopefully it will be, and hopefully it'll be interesting, and hopefully it'll be helpful, productive. So uh, I look forward to starting that and keeping um, people posted about that because I'm excited about it. And, uh, and I have a job, which is uh, crazy. Who thought I would be getting a job? But it's obviously temporary. Well, it's as long as the pandemic is going on, so it's it's permanent. It's a permanent job. Yeah. Um, this uh, episode that I'm going to start with is with uh, my friend Jock. He's a new friend. It's the first time I ever talked to him um, face-to-face with words. We connected on Instagram. You'll hear the story. Um, he found my video, my PSA video that I posted back in March and, uh, he sent me a message and, you know, we all get random DMs and normally I'm just like, ha or whatever. And that's it. But he seemed like a really nice dude, just like very, very nice person. So I was like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll respond to this fella. And, um. I did, and we, you know, kind of message back and forth every once in a while when there was something relevant, or we'd post something, and the other would respond. And he seems like a really nice dude, and uh, he is a musician, and he does live streams. And I'm gonna link to all of his stuff, so please follow him, please find him, please listen to his music. He's an artist, and this is a hard time for artists, so check him out, support him, support other artists, musicians, um, and. Uh, he is in Sweden. He's a dual citizen, American and, and Swedish. So that's interesting. In Sweden, I wanted to talk to him in particular because he's the only person I know in Sweden. And Sweden has been uh, sort of an outlier in their response to the pandemic. So uh, I thought it'd be interesting to hear his perspective. And uh, he uh, shed some light on some things that I didn't really understand and uh, some stuff that I never thought of. So um, it's interesting and I uh, hope you like it. Get in touch. Get on the pod. We're back. All right. Here it is. Before we get too deep, you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, let me backtrack a little bit and just, uh, so you and I don't even really know each other. Is it cool if we just jump in? Cause, yeah, sure. Fine. Okay. It's fine. Yeah. So you and I, I think it's, it's funny. You and I don't really even know each other at all. Um, no. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I came across the, this Instagram uh, video of yours uh, uh, that you had made about the time that you left Los Angeles to head back to Pennsylvania. Right. And I thought what I, it was music to my ears, what I was hearing, because at the time I was very sort of frustrated with Sweden's response uh, to things, uh, as you were frustrated with the response there. Right. And I was, I had just left um, LA that day and I was 
frantically driving home and I made, it was before really people. It was a hell house, you know, I had to also check out some of your, your films and stuff as well. <laughs> you did that on purpose. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you for doing that. Uh, yeah. But it was at a time when everything was really up in the air and there was sort of a panic and we didn't really know much about the virus at the time. So mm. I was just kind of like zoned in driving across the country and I made this, uh, this PSA because I felt obligated. There was a lot of bad information, there's, there still is, but at the time people kind of didn't know what to latch onto. And I was like, okay, well I have a background in public health and science and like I have all this education and I kind of feel like I, maybe um, can speak intelligently in this and maybe give people something to hold on to in this crazy time. So I made this sure. like, PSA video and uh, a bunch of my friends shared it. It, it. it didn't go that viral. I have no idea how, how you even saw it, which is, it seems kind of crazy. But, uh, yeah, I don't know how the, these algorithms work, which I did maybe then my, I'd be a bit more successful on Instagram <laughs> reaching people myself. Same, but, same. But yeah. uh, so you are in Sweden. I'm in Sweden. And are you, Swedish, did you grow up there? No, no, I'm, a, I'm American originally. I'm a, I'm a dual citizen now, but I've lived here since about 2005. Uh, and uh, I, 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 when my first daughter was born about 11 years ago, I applied for citizenship. Okay. Uh, I'm flu most nearly fluent in language, but I, I speak English most of the time in, at home with the uh, children and, and my, uh, I mean, some, my partner. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and they were here in, in Gothenburg on the west coast, the se Sweden's second largest city. Uh, it's sort okay. of Stockholm and then Gothenburg and then Malmo to the south of, uh, in the three largest cities. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm not very familiar with Sweden, I'll be honest, but um, that's kind of why I wanted to talk to you. I, well, you have to come visit in, uh, when you can uh, and if you can. You know, Sweden, I guess, sort of gotten, you know, when borders opened up, uh, you know, Sweden was sort of left out of that, out of that picture for their mm. response uh, and, and their way to respond to the I, I first I was very um uh it, it, it's, it's been so sort of surreal to watch things from you're already quite isolated as you are in Sweden anyway and you're sort of sort of watching the the world revolve around you and, and the news in different places and I we were watching Italy and Spain very closely thinking okay this yeah eventually this is going to reach Sweden on the, the magnitude how much it's going to impact us in our lives um um I guess people were then still weren't concerned they you know sort of you know feel a little bit like ah, you know a bit removed and isolated here to think that things can really hurt you in, in Sweden and and, uh, and it was difficult for me to see friends and family uh, you know having to wear masks everywhere they went uh, the roads highways being barren um, uh, we had that little short panic in the in the beginning uh, you know the the toilet paper panic uh, I would say for like a you know a week um, but uh, no, I and then everyone's implicated, you know, started using all the, the social distancing, you know, markings on the ground in the stores and uh, and, and providing, you know, alcohol gel uh, at the entrance or exits and uh, trying to keep in revolving doors, like, you know, maximum two people at a time. Yeah, but the government has really put a lot of trust in people. I, to me, I thought this was just insane and this very cocky move of Sweden. And, uh, uh, and though they have admitted that, you know, they had this high mortality rate and admitted that you know they've sort of failed the elderly that hasn't really been like a sincere sort of you know show of emotion of apology that's sort of a cultural thing too i think i think people are pretty upset that that is uh, i don't think they expected it to uh, infiltrate the care homes uh, elderly homes as, as much yeah so so what you're referring to is um was early on in the pandemic there was sort of uh almost worldwide people countries started to shut down right sure yeah i wanted yeah. to talk to you because sweden like i said i don't know a lot about it and i don't know about the government and the history and the politics or anything like that but mm -hmm. i kind of all eyes were on sweden for a little while because they had sort of a the opposite policy they were like we're mm -hmm. at least and i don't i don't actually know how it went because i've heard a few different things but it seemed like they were uh the Swedish government was saying like, we're not going to shut down. We're going to keep schools open. Hmm. Um, kind of like implying maybe that the virus isn't as bad as we thought or, or, or what, I don't know what the implications hmm. necessarily are, but it seemed like most people were going about life uh, as normal. I want to say, yeah. or sure. No, I, I hear you saying, I think that it's also the timing of this game. I mean, there, there's, 
they're saying that it was late January when the first case sort of came from a, a woman who uh, was affected from, uh, Wuhan somewhere. I think it was in, in central Sweden. But there is possibility that it had was here since December of 2019. And I think so possibly because our family, ourselves, we were, we, this, the problem is it's the timing that it came here because every year we have something called the Winterkrek, like the winter puke. I don't know any way of making that sound sound nice um but it's a really um awful winter stomach flu uh and uh, and everybody's always bracing themselves and especially anybody who has children and uh, children in, in preschool or elementary school are bracing themselves for when when that hits and it just didn't come so we were i had a couple of days where i felt like you know i had this really heavy you know like someone's foot was on my chest or something and it was gone and then and uh but there was no ability to, to get an antibody test then uh, at, at the time at all. Um, I still haven't uh, been able to have a, a, a test. Actually, they, um, some, I had a friend who was working for Volvo and I think eventually they, they tested uh, his office staff, even though they had been working for home, they brought them back kind of for a week, which seemed strange to me too, that like bring them back to, to work for a week before then you know, going on summer vacation. Um, but uh, I think it cost by me like 500 kroners uh, to, to do so, to, to get an antibody test. And, you know, the, the um, reliability of these, these tests of, of, of being, you know, so I, I, don't, I don't think a lot of people have been tested for antibodies unless they, maybe their employment is, um, it is, I mean, people, it's, it's there. Everything is everyone's disposal. You, you can find masks easily. You can find, you can find hand swabs. Um, um, plastic gloves. Um, there's no no problem uh, with that. Uh, no sh no really shortage. You know, even there's been demand for so much. No shortage in any supply. I, and uh, I think people have been taking. Uh, for me, it was just sort of, you know being part American. It's first. It's hard to me for people to, to have this trust in the government um, <clears throat> right away. And a lot of Swedish scientists are saying that you know we don't trust the government. You know the system. We trust data. And you know, these high mortality rates are showing that we're not doing this correctly. And a lot of Swedish Nobel Prize winning scientists saying, you know, we you know, should follow what the WHO says and we should be wearing masks, yet we're not doing it. And I thought it was kind of hard that, that everybody's trust was relying on this you know, one epidemiologist, state appointed epidemiologist, uh, on, uh, Anders Tegnell. Um, but um, I mean, uh, yeah, I. I, I I, I thought when Denmark and Norway shut the doors, I thought that it would make smart, you know, be a smart move for us to do so. And I was having constant sort of disagreements about it with my with my partner. Um, but the the more that, that it's gone since then, and that we have seen the daily, um, you know, rates stop. I think if the Swedish government has been monitoring very closely, and it hasn't. I think the problem for me in other countries that I observe yeah, that it is like it's becoming a political, you know, agenda of sorts. And I really even though I think maybe I wanted to find that here <laughs> myself. Um, uh, you know, I, I do have faith in our government because I voted for the, this, the Social Democrats. I, I'm more of the events party uh, to left them. Um, and uh, so I have to, so I'm sorry about that. I have to say that, okay. um, um, that I do have uh, faith in them. But it, it's still, I'm still frightened when, um, when going out wondering, you know, for the be beginning, for the most part, I was wearing a mask. Uh, when I went out to the grocery stores and shopping, and gloves uh, as well, but um, the, I was instantly the you know the minority of people doing it, um, even getting some some comments from people. And I, I kind of thought that right, you know, this Swedish, you know, you know, it's hard. Sweden is known as something for yantolog, having humility and no one being too proud or thinking they're you know better than anybody else, and uh, you know, sort of leaving that cockiness at, at bay. But it seemed like Sweden was getting you know, as changing and yeah, that this comfort, you know, this cockiness and, and that they're handling it the right way is going to be a downfall. And, that, and I guess it's going to, it's really hard to say right now at all. And I, and if you listen to, you know, under, under, uh, under his technical talking, it's about, it's basically, he's not saying anything more than I'm saying. I think in, um, you know, we, we have to see what happens after the summertime uh, now, uh, because in the summer time, as it is, Swedes are often go to the countryside. And right now, I'm not even at home. I'm at a friend's place in the, in the countryside. Um, uh, we're doing a lot more activities outdoors. Uh, and, all, and I guess the culture itself in general are not, you know, pretty sort of distant anyway. I, I mean, people, all, you know, are, are social and, and, uh, and maybe groups of their own already. So, I mean, if you were to go out, it's usually people are out in groups of people that are, so I, I think, and then when people were 
you know, sort of told on, you know, on Easter holidays, you know, or in other holidays, you know, not to, uh, to travel a little bit less. They saw that, 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 you know, alarming, you know, amount, large amount of figure had, uh, um, had sort of followed that. Um, mm. But uh, no, it's, I, I have my moments with it uh, on ease and it's sort of, I, I, I don't think people are really, you know, for the most part in, in public places, especially like grocery stores. That's my most like, my concern. Uh, people are, aren't really expecting distances. And I, I often try to, and I find it's like the elderly people who are actually coming closer when I'm sort of like trying to turn. And I've to the point where I've stopped wearing a mask as well too. And I'm, um, and I don't, and I don't have a really good explanation for that. Uh, yeah, I I do see them on an occasion. Um, but, um, it's sort of like, you know, the episode of Seinfeld where they're trying to, everyone's trying to get, you know, Kramer to wear the pink ribbon for cancer and Uh we're bullying the alleyway here. It's sort of like the opposite though. If you're, if you are wearing one, it's sort of kind of, I think it's scaring people more. And even though it should be, I'm a, I'm I'm an advocate for the use of masks. Uh, I know that not 100% foolproof, but I do know, do know that it can help prevent others uh, getting sick. If you have possibly potentially had the virus, like I think we may have, and I have my family. So, wow. but I do think in the, when the autumn comes that there a second wave here could be bigger. But I, as we're seeing now, the daily rates in Denmark and Norway are going quite high. They're increasing as we ours have sort of have flattened out. Yeah, so, Sweden seems to be a, like a, yeah. it seemed to be an anomaly. A lot of everyone was like, well, Sweden's not closed down. Um, mm-hmm. So why are we kind of thing? And Amer- that's was an American perspective, especially the conservative perspective. Yeah. And, um, but what it sounds like you're saying is just more, there was clear information like available to you for like yes yeah science and then people were just every monday they the the the, the, the parliament i mean our prime minister stefan levgren would be sort of giving or every other monday every two weeks uh, um uh, for an hour long speech with the, the press and you know a statement to the people uh hey what can i help you uh in a little while uh, yeah okay yeah <laughs> My computer is used more for Roblox than Zoom calls. So. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, um, but, uh, well, I, so yeah, schools are. You say you're right. Schools stay open, primary school and elementary school, but universities are not. And I had gone back to school to finish a, a BA degree, and I never finished college. So and in literature, and so my, I was doing a thesis paper and was having kind of close contact with a professor. But that, of course, can be done online now. He's he's sort of stuck in in France. Um, but yeah, it was just it was just. Um, uh, you know, some office buildings and, and universities that, that, you know, voluntarily shut down. But uh, it seems like what you're saying, like more power was given to individuals to make informed decisions saying, like, yes, here's yeah. your here's the information. Like, this is what we think is safe. Mm. We're not going to shut everything down for you, but you probably should. Yeah. And it sounds insane. Anybody thinking that, you know, to give um, you know, people that much, you know, Sort of authority to make that decision uh, didn't work here very well. <laughs> no, I don't think it could. It could. I, I mean, you know, um, I, I was I was certain here that the the hospitals and I you know intensive care units would be overcrowded. But this way of handling it, that everybody was saying that the Swedes are really trying to go for the herd immunity, and whether they ever admits to attempting herd immunity, or I do think that they think that the idea of herd immunity could help make. COVID more manageable uh, to be able to keep beds free. And there was all, it was a quick uh, move to, to set up the, you know, um, hospital tents, military, you know, tents outside of uh, hospitals in Stockholm and Gothenburg, as, as far as I know, Malmo probably. Um, um, and uh, no, like I mean, the, gold, I think gold. bars and restaurants, you know, they even remained open as well, but still took a hit because I think there people really did use their, you know, you know, smarts that you know majority of people i know are, are not you know going out i had a friend i said like, have you been out recently to eat to drink he said i went well, out and you'd be surprised it was mostly you know elderly people that were out in in troves wow. and that to me i was a little yeah um but it, it's also again i think you know the swedes are, are are used to going through these these tough you know the flu in general uh, is in when it's cold weather here uh, quite a lot and the the way that they approached um you know, here I guess this, uh, even though it wasn't even attempted here, I mean, but the way they they they, they flattened it, it, it helps stop like cases of the flu altogether. 
Um, and I guess as far as we know, that, that winter illness never came. Um, and uh, no, it's, I think it's just really a matter of time now as it starts to get cold again here. That's why you're talking to me on probably one of the, the hotter days of the summer, about 20, what is it now? 25 you know, Celsius. That's so, nice. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's nice. It's, it's, uh, so it's been a lot of you know, swimming in lakes and uh, you know, time in the, in the nature too, which is also good for mental health. They, they say that keeping the schools open was very good for public health and, and, and mental health for children. Um, I kept my youngest daughter home with seven for a few months. I was a bit concerned, uh, but my, uh, my partner, she's a preschool teacher and, uh, and herself, I, I was concerned because she had asthma, but she, um, she, the, the parents would, would leave the children, you know, at the door um, and they took all measures and everybody at her uh, job was fine. Um, no, but uh, I have some, uh, if I could, some like general sure, questions. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah about Sweden because I just I don't know do people generally have like a lot of trust in the government there well you know I that's something that I probably wouldn't have even you know thought to consider and until until this actually uh, and it was strange I, we were kind of in a the last election were kind of uh, in a, a hung you know a hung vote uh, so the 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 you know the previous the social democrats remained in, in power um, and uh, there's been a lot of, I think, frustration with the, the right, with the moderates, as they're starting to, um, you know, make a, you know, a, alliance with parties that they said they never would, like the Sverige Democrats, who were the, the far right. And, um, and right now, it feels that a lot of Swedes' minds are further from politics than I think I would like them to be, as uh, the election every four years, and I think this election was just what two year and a half ago, two years. I could be wrong, sorry. Um, and this was the first election I was able to to vote in. I, I've been, you know, I used to be someone who was really involved in politics, and now I'm really trying to limit my news and really trying to stay Switzerland as opposed to Sweden in this. Um, mm. in, but I do think, I think in general, this has brought, you know, Sweden you know together more and and even beyond in politics, and maybe it maybe stopped some of that political tension that there, there was before, because it's sort of, you know, there's been more focus on the news, out, you know, out, outside of Sweden, I, I would say, actually, right now. I mean, we, it's always interesting for me, for one thing to see news about the US while you're there or uh, other countries in, in Europe, but then to look at it from afar. Um, but you know, things have, I, I actually feel very grateful and very lucky to be here right now. I mean, the yeah, it's a, a semi-intact economy, but it, it, the winter months are really going to be a challenge on the economy as well, too. They, for instance, with the, for most people who are, are entertainers like yourself or musicians, it, we've taken the hardest hit here, I think. And uh, we can only, there are only gatherings up to 50 people. I know they've recently tried to start doing these pre-ticketed events where they're setting up, you know, chairs in two meters distance from one another. I, I saw that one happened just for the very first time last weekend. Um, but um, for the most part, from what I've heard, people are still, you know, out and, and attending bars and they have table service. Um, wow. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's uh, well, the weekends. Yeah. It's interesting what you said that you find or you get the sense that uh, people are coming together, which makes yeah. sense because that's what's supposed to happen in a crisis, right? Like mm -hmm. you get rid of sort of the... Uh, Mm. the politics and, and the stuff that doesn't necessarily matter and you get down to basic needs and what brings people together. But yeah. the opposite is happening here. And just like the most basic um, tools that we have are being politicized. And it's, mm. it's, it's just, it's very ugly. <laughs> I know. It's ugly to see. It's sad to see. And it's very, very frustrating. I, you know, I, I mean, even uh, if we can get Biden in the office and, in November, you know, how, how long is it going to take for, for things to, 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 to rebuild in, in the U.S.? You know? It's going to be ugly either way. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah. yeah, I, I don't know. I think as I've, I've had so many, you know, thoughts on all of this and so many heated in discussions with, with folks. And then it's sort of to the point of you know, it's just, it's just not helping, you know, I mean, I adding more and more fuel to the fire. I actually, I, 
I don't think that any of my Swedish friends had ever say, right, okay, this is the right way, you know, or been the, the, the way to handle things in a sort of, you know, nationalistic pride way at all. Uh, any friends with, with different, uh, you know, political uh, views or uh, mindsets. Um, and so I, I began to think, okay, right, well, they're still, you know, uncertain. And it really is just this big, you know, wait, wait and see. Um, for me, I, I'm, I'm, you know, it's the autumn, is not just thinking of what's you know the cold's going to bring here, but what the election is going to bring in the U.S. and how that's also going to affect the rest of the world, sure. uh, and Sweden as well. So, um, yeah, you might you might not know the answer to this question, but it's something that people were talking about um, when when Sweden was sort of the outlier a few months mm -hmm. ago. Um, there were kind of theories as to why Sweden was doing better, even though it wasn't shutting down and people were sort of saying that there are big demographic differences or do you think there's something different about Swedish or Swedes uh, um, than like Americans? Are they more healthy? Is there a different lifestyle? Is it different demographics? I think, um, I, I, in Sweden in general are pretty outdoorsy and, 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 and yeah, and, but, and, uh, and, and, and healthy, some extent, but I, there's that, that, that wouldn't be. And I think that, I think that also it's just a, not such a, I mean, Swedes in general, being Swede myself, um, you know, we're very, you know, emotional, but maybe not ex expressing it so much, maybe not so dramatic uh, and, and, and way quick to react. Uh, Swedes, for the most part, when I, my first experience of living in Sweden, that Swedes are such great listeners, thinking of things on all sides, and, and maybe sometimes a little bit too um, in, in neutral and not really wanting to, I mean, just by watching some of Anders, you know, technical uh, speeches, you, you sort of see it's just, no, no one's trying to, to say they're, they're right or wrong or really want to, um, I mean, it's, 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 I, I do think a lot of it's like, like that too. I mean, we're, we're not ingesting maybe the media as much as well. We're not having, uh, having that, you know, really in our, in our face so much. I mean, it's always there at our reach if, if, if we want to, to uh, follow that. Um, I th and I, I think that just, uh, I mean, people, even though if people are maybe just trusting, I don't think people really challenge it as much as as they all feel that they should. Like they, I think a lot of Swedes, are, you know, are, are politically left-minded, like myself, really feel like we need someone, um, you know, even um, I forget the lead, head of the that's the party right now. It's terrible, top of my head. But um, feel that we need someone to even have, you know, more gusto and and be more and more, you know aggressive leader in speech and really saying what needs to be said um so you know maybe one of the reasons why the well, swedes are sort of just going on with the government as it is um because uh, i guess sort of, sort of feels like you know what's the point no matter what we say is gonna really change it so let's just go along with it and let's just see um but you know i i um i mean there even been we, in the, when the george floyd passed away there was a, a a gathering in memory of him it grew to be about five thousand or six thousand people in, in about half an hour and they did have an area cordon off for 50 people uh using loudspeakers like that and the, the police were there but it, eventually some people had broke down that you know that little plastic you know police barrier and they had to stop it but everyone also at this uh, gathering was were wearing masks and they were handing out and out the at all the entrance and exits exits to it um uh, but the demo, demographic wise I, I i don't I really just think that a lot of it is the there's the there's not so much like a fear factor created by the media and, and the press with everything. If things are sort of always really factually laid out for a Swede, I think it's sort of like especially like if an older Swede were to ask you what uh, a clock in, you know, what's the time, and they would want it well, it precise like clock in a two, you know, over clock in two. Okay, very exact. So. I think that they're really, really looking at things, you know, factually and are really looking at the, the numbers of it. And I think their biggest downfall and, and is not just that they've, they've sort of failed the elderly community, but it failed to really apologize, I think, publicly to the families of it. And, but that's another thing that a Swede may never really, you know, stand up and say, okay, right, we want an apology from it, just sort of let it go. And let's take it from here and let's see what happens come autumn, I, you know? So the government has not admitted that it was like a failure on their part? No, I don't believe they Well, they admit that there was a failure on their part, but there wasn't really any sort of, you know, 
then maybe a cultural thing to sort of a, you know, a sincere, you know, apology yeah. from our prime minister. And that's something that I was actually kind of shocked by. And that's when I started getting more frustrated again with house. Cause I have a friend who works in, in an object care home. Um, and he said they were always taking precautions, um, but it just, sure. it, was, it just really shows how susceptible the elderly are to getting it. And this is why I feel that if you're just going to run down to pick up something grocery store that you maybe not really need today, why not just throw on a mask? Why not? Like if, you know, you've possibly have had that and you're going to be, you know, there maybe is an elderly person there who, you know, doesn't even know she might have, he or she might have dementia and not even know there's a virus or understand. Like yeah. one of my friends had experiments, he had exper experience where he had this, you know, one patient with, uh, with Alzheimer's and they didn't understand why, you know, yeah. they were being approached. And so uh, I, I, it's, I think that any, uh, you know, a country could have, why Sweden decided to, to be this sort of, you know, torchbearer in, in any this way, I don't think it was something they just sat around and, and, and it was some agenda thinking. I think it's just how it would handle any sort of problem very, very calmly. Uh, and even if it takes a lot of time, like any business deal in Sweden, it's, it's going to take time. It's not like in the U.S. is going to make a decision really quickly and, you know, fire off at one another. It's, it's, um, it's so it, we're always kind of used to the long game, the long winter months, you know, the, the long dark ones. We had an extremely long one this past winter. Uh, so we're kind of okay with sitting, you know, sitting by on the wayside. But um, so you I think, think there's the are thinking like, oh, we should be doing it like they're 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 the odd uh, few Swedes that are very opinionated about, it, especially those who have lost somebody. Um, sure. But I know a, a girl in Stockholm who's feeling, and I was like, well, she must be the only one voicing this. I understand her. Why this is insane? Why is nobody? But you know, that's the American side of me being like, you know, turn on the news. Oh my God! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so it's, was there a period of like, it sounds like things are a little bit relaxed right now, which is great. I, I feel I, like they're yeah. too relaxed. I feel like okay. myself that it's too relaxed and it's very relaxed and it doesn't feel like anything's really that different. Uh, and um, other than those, you know, these uh, guidelines, you know, set in stores and shops and, and, uh, and shopping malls and, and whatnot. Um, but it doesn't feel like less people, right? It feels, even more now, actually, the period right afterwards, it felt dead for a bit, but it's sort of like it didn't keep, I, I think people started to um, congregate more quickly than I personally felt comfortable with. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've, yeah. I keep to a, a, like a select, maybe like four or five friends, and, you know, friends of the family with my, uh, my partner and kids. And so um, already I've kept, and the only time that I would really see people was when I had a, a show or a go to, and I'm most, all of my, my gigs and shows and festivals this autumn were, were canceled. Um, but they've been rescheduled to next year as if, you know, that's gonna, if that's gonna happen or not. But, um, and also I, I think it's sort of, people are like already sort of mentally preparing themselves for getting through another dark winter now. So I'm like, right, okay, we're gonna have to go through this game. We can handle it. I mean, Swedes are quite resilient in that, in, in that sense of being able to go long periods of time uh, before having contact with others. So if, Asking Swedes to be more socially distant, I don't think it was maybe more difficult for, you know, Americans or, or um, that are much more social and gathering and, you know. Yeah, that's, anyway. that's interesting. I hadn't, I hadn't considered that, that there's just a cultural mm -hmm. element that kind of makes Swedes more equipped yeah. to yeah. Uh, this on. Yeah, they just wrote, they just, they just were been Swedish through all, all of this and with nothing really yeah. planned to handle anything differently. I think they... Swedes so general thought, okay, well, maybe we now, now that people are having these markings on the ground in the stores, maybe we need to do that too. Maybe we should do that. But masks, you know, it's up to you. you know? <laughs> so it's, <laughs> just... <laughs> well, so I, I checked the news right before this call just to see if there was anything about Sweden. And sure. uh, so, okay, basically the news to me is this weird ro roller coaster was like, okay, Sweden is, um, is doing great. They, they've not shut down and there seems to be no issue. And then I was like, okay, Sweden's a cautionary tale, right? Like, yeah, they failed. And then today, it seems like... Um, the, What's the day? Because that's the last thing I read was a cautionary tale. Yeah, so just within the last day, there is uh, news that's like... Is this the guy that you were talking about, Anders Tegnell? Tegnell? Mm -hmm. um, he's saying... Oh, Anders Tegnell. Uh, Anders Tegnell. Um, he's yeah. saying that, uh, well, the headline is Sweden's top virologist has a message on how to defeat coronavirus, open schools and no masks. And this is from today or yesterday. 
they and, keep saying, you know, that 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 the virus, you know, has very, you know, it's very not very threatening to children, and yet we're hearing cases in other parts of the world, in the U.S., where there are, you know, children certainly. that. Are, and I, of course, am watching the debate in the U.S., you know, about whether to re reopen schools. Now. Have they decided to do that to reopen schools everywhere, or is that a state? I, I'm not totally sure what's happening with that. I know that there's a big debate and I, I don't have kids, so I'm not mm. very mm. honed in on it, but I know that, mm. I mean, I don't think that they should open personally um, mm. uh, because I, as you said, kids can definitely, there is science mm. showing that kids can be, um, kids can transmit the virus. For a while, people mm. didn't think that they were as infectious because they d tend to not have the respiratory symptoms as much. It's, it presents as a, like different stuff. But mm -hmm. now there's another, there's other science coming out that's saying that they're just as infectious as adults. Mm -hmm. So it's maybe no different. And I think maybe like the sort of thing is that in the US, you're going to look at things from many different angles. You're going to discuss it openly, bring it all on the table here. You're going to discuss most things and, and we will discuss them if somewhere else were to bring them up. I think for instance, like the idea to keep schools open is like, is that, the idea, it's going to be a little, a few minutes longer, sorry for the Roblox. <laughs> um, and uh, that, you know, like, uh, um, for like, you know, uh, you know, parents who are first responders, for instance, police or firemen and things like that, who, who need to leave their, their children at, at preschools or, uh, or elementary school, have no way of watching their children. I, I, I not, and part of me in the back of my mind thinks that, that Sweden is considering keeping schools open, and, and, you know, for those age of children, because they're, likely parents are likely first responders so but it's that's not an easy conversation yeah 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 so um but um no i'm i'm still still concerned i'm still weary i'm still with my children start school in about two weeks of, you know for them but they you know they've they've implicated all the same measures in, in schools and you know going over with the you know children uh, hand hygiene and and signs and you know and alcohol gel and you know if, you know, my 11 year old daughter is having her own you know gel with her and but uh, no, I, 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 I'm really concerned. Uh, as I've heard also about some, some case in Holland, I believe there was some 11 year old, I think who had, had gotten uh, COVID and who died. Um, so I, I mean, the kids are much less likely to, yeah. to, to die from it, yeah. like yeah. luckily. But they, yeah. I think the worry is really that they yeah. can transmit yeah. it and just make yeah. it you know, exponential. Yeah. That's and true. Yeah. Get to teachers, get to their families, get to adults, get everywhere, and just yeah. you know massively spread the virus. Um, yeah. But uh, there are, there's okay. obviously no to the point like oh I can't touch me like one of my daughter's teachers was kept I mean quite she was staying home because well, they were saying that oh if you're feeling a little bit sick say at yeah, all oh, stay home and that's sure. what the you know, government's been saying and she was and uh, not the, the symptoms and I went to pick up her assignments and the teacher is really not and I really have to say sorry I I need to you know. It feels that's a very uncomfortable thing for someone to do in any, you know, you know, scenario. But yeah, um, yeah. But I don't, I don't know what much more I could, you know, the 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 one I've been speaking to friends over the last several months. Um, uh, you know, I've been really, really not happy with the state of things. But now, in the last few months, I have some more time to reflect on it and being away and out of city and in the country and, you know, in, you know, the small city of Gothenburg um, have, uh, you know, kind of looked at it that maybe this, this is, is working, you know, for now and now is the most important thing that we need to be, you know, try to focus, focus on anyway. Um, but yeah, their concerns, I think, are there for everyone, but it's just that they're not, there's not so much need in voicing that. So everybody sort of keeps their, these opinions and, and just are, are just kind of, going through their Swedish summer as normal. And, and I think it's good, you know, as well and healthy. Um, but it's also got me worried, again, like what happens come September and November as we start getting the rain and the cold turning to snow, um, you yeah. know. Yeah. Well, I, hey, I don't want to keep you. I know that people no, are trying, trying to get past you. Um, <laughs> no, it's just, <laughs> just my, um, yeah. yeah. But uh, I, you're a musician as well, right? Yeah. And, uh, please like tell, Plug whatever you would like. Tell everybody. Oh yeah, yeah. I um, I have, I uh, had a band some years ago called Ghost Dance Disturbance, but then we split up. I went uh, solo and started using my own name for whatever 
great reason that was. <laughs> so, no, right. But I have a few uh, few records out now under my name uh, and uh, about to release a new one this this autumn. At first, I was like, you know, it's it doesn't feel like the right time to be releasing things and getting things and, and, and sharing things out there. There's more important things to focus on, you know, family and, and health and stuff until one um, recent artist that I collaborated with in my last single, single uh, like California. So, you know, this is what keeps the these collaborations, what keeps the world going around. I'm talking to you today, too. This is this has been uh, good. And I uh, hope it's helpful for some people looking at, yeah. at things from there. You know, it's I, I, I feel I see that, um, you know, the, the fear and in, in, in the worry and the concern in the U.S. and I and I get it and and the real people advocating for masks and I support that. Uh, but I think seeing a way that Sweden it, it hopefully it helps people stay a little bit calmer and think a little bit more um, about how their actions, you know, whether their hygiene or wearing a wearing mask will affect somebody else, uh, and while leaving the politics at the door. Um, because that's, that's, that's very much fair. yeah but um yeah if those those records and, and I, I guess i try to stick to it um because it, it was a plan to release it uh, before um this so um well, i think there's going to be a lot of great art that comes out of this so i wouldn't feel absolutely. any guilt about it. <laughs> oh, that, yeah um, cool. and i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna link to all your stuff um and thanks i appreciate get it some supporters out of this um although you just had a new film that came out right uh, yourself in, in Is Canada, it a French Canadian film, yeah, or, or yeah, yeah, we filmed it up in Canada. It's a Canadian story, a French Canadian oh. story. So, uh, but it'll be out in the U.S. hopefully. One of these. Oh, cool! Yeah. I look forward to checking. I, everyone thinks that I'm French Canadian, the name, but I'm, I'm I actually I, I speak better Swedish than I do French. And I, my grandfather was French and uh, Dutch Dutch citizen. So, cool, but, uh, I hope that you and your family keep safe, uh, stay calm, yeah. stay happy. All this stuff. Thank you so much. Thanks. For, uh, you too. Stay healthy and uh, and 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 safe and sanitized. I kind of stole that from Peter Stormare, who's always saying that. Stay okay. safe. Stay clean. <laughs> stay sanitized. Nice man. Don't well, hurt anyone. There's a great uh, project out of a guy in Vermont who it was. He's just like, hey, I just make T-shirts. Oh, yeah. I should check check it out. I'll send it to you. Good stay advice. healthy. Spent too much time in California. Now I'm in Pennsylvania. 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 Pennsylvania.